In this module, we're going to go through probably the most important phase of your career, interning or volunteering. One of the things I find so important about interning and volunteering is it has to have synergy with your why. Too often, we get to this a critical juncture from a mentor, coach, intern, volunteer relationship, and that realization sits in that the person volunteering and interning just doesn't want to do it or doesn't want to do it in this setting or doesn't want to do it at this place. Now, there's a good and bad to that. This is that moment where you can cut your losses and move on without any real big investment. But there's also a transformation or opportunity to go, well, why do you want this? So that's what's going to be the premise of this. It's going through why you should want something. But then on how, after you realize you really want to be a strength coach, because if you are willing to make that sacrifice and commitment for your career, you should be strategic with how you choose your internships. You should be strategic by how you perform at your internships. And you should ask yourself a really hard but fundamental question. Is this in line with what I want to accomplish in this profession? If we can get to the bottom of how to leverage these internships and volunteer experiences to your career advancement, we're going to have such a better relationship with volunteering and interning. It's not a matter who can do the most hours or who can do the most internships. It's who can pick the right one based off their circumstances to optimize their trajectory of their career. I've had hundreds of interns, and you might think I'm exaggerating. I really have, I'm really not. When you look at over the course of my 18 year career, one of the things I really put a lot of, a lot of value in is this building up your farm system. And one of the things that I always thought from a strength conditioning coach is you're only gonna be as good as the people around you, right? They, you're, the, the, the adage of you're the product of the five people you hang out with most, so they better be good, right? And they better accentuate things like weaknesses, right? Am I not good at communicating? Am I not good at understanding programming? Am I not good at X, Y, and Z in strength conditioning? Well, we should bring complementary pieces in in order to facilitate that. But how do you really know? Honestly, how does a coach know in a brief interaction at a conference or an interview that that person's going to be extremely valuable from complementing weaknesses, accentuating areas that need to be accentuated in a small sample. So I always looked at the best interview I could possibly do is the internship. And that's going to frame this conversation, this module, because this is such a, I don't know, forgotten aspect of volunteering and interning that I have the best idea who you are and what you're capable of doing in this internship period than any other format of interviewing. I have, I have spent a lot of time and a lot of energy with interviewing and interviewing format. I got it down to a science. I have multiple levels. I go through extensively interviewing and hiring the best people. But I'll tell you this, all of that pales in comparison to what I get out of the internship process to evaluate strength coaches in the future. It gives me a lot of information. But that should be where the, the frame work really comes from. Are you entering an internship and a volunteer experience to get a job? And if you're not, if you don't believe there's a prospect of you getting a job, why the hell are you doing that internship? Why are you gaining that experience? Because that is the game here. So if you told me I have a very specific goal, and here's the, here's the trick. The more specific, the more sacrifice you're going to have to make. Bottom line. That's the truth. I want to work with this team. That means it's going to be a ton of sacrifice. And if you're playing poker, you just showed your cards. I know that if I'm working at a professional sports organization and you told me that you would step over your dead dog to get the job, why would I ever have to pay you? You might come off as that's cruel or that's harsh. I can get a really good coach that's going to work his ass off or her ass off without having to pay him. Maybe I need to do that. 
Because I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to facilitate a better future for me and my family or me and my organization. And you just told me you're willing to do anything. And that becomes the, the issue here. And we'll talk about that in negotiation. You need to have some sort of context of your value, but it comes down to, are you showing your cards too early or are you picking the wrong situations? If you're going to go volunteer at a place that will never pay you, you probably should consider not volunteering there. And I'm just saying that to be truthful here. And unless you have some sort of assurances, whether it's previous history, that this staff or that coach is very much so likely to hire the people that volunteer and work for them in the future, or this staff has a really high pedigree of developing coaches that not only gets them an opportunity to work at that current place or gets them an opportunity to work somewhere else, then you should evaluate going there. And this is the, the central theme that we talked about in Just Starting. Why are you doing this? And is it in line with what you're, going, what you're going to do? So if I want to work at a prestigious university and I want to do that because I want to have notoriety and recognition and I want to be acknowledged for what I'm doing, and let's not, let's not play this facade and game. We're not really withholding any information when we say I want to help people and, I'm, and I genuinely want to provide for people what I never had when you're only saying I want to work with elite level populations or professional athletes or people that are intrinsically motivated. You're not, you're not hiding anything. You're not disclosing anything that we don't already know. But the truth is, if you're so myopically focused on one singular thing, it's going to take a lot of sacrifice. And the, the trick is, if you're willing to make that sacrifice and you're willing to put in the work, you better realize this is what you genuinely want, want to do based off a of dialed-in why. And that's the whole premise of this conversation. Let's start off with picking the right internships. Does that, does that have any context in terms of your potential of getting a job, your ability to afford it, your ability to get skill sets and knowledge that you don't already have? Or are you just chasing the logo? Are you chasing whatever that organization might represent for potential or opportunity? There is no shortage of people who want to get those opportunities. That if I can just get that college internship, everything will be revealed. And then all you do is break down weights, clean, set up, and then go home. You get no actually on-the-job training. You get no knowledge. You get no assurances that you are not only even a better coach, but you have a better opportunity to getting a job. Essentially, you're just living in strength and conditioning purgative, like purgatory. You have no, no actual tangible thing that you're gaining in the months that you are volunteering other than just being tired maybe a t-shirt, maybe some supplements from here and there, and maybe an opportunity to work out in the weight room. But if you're in a sea, I mean, an absolute sea of people that are willing to travel across the country, sacrifice their arm and a leg to volunteer someone with no other really context is other than saying, I interned at that place. You're not going to get what you want from it. Now, it might be a necessary evil at a certain point in your career to get this higher profile internship and prove yourself. But there's a timing component to it too. That if you're going to this power five school and trying to work with the football program there as your first internship and you're not nearly as polished or as capable as you currently, as you should be, you're not gonna get the most from that experience. The only thing you do is gonna get graded so far down you'll never recover. We'll talk about this at the end of this module about finishing strong and getting what you want out of this. But that's the key, is being very, very selective with when and where you intern. When matters. So if this is my first internship and it's going to a very high stakes, high profile situation and I'm not ready for it emotionally or cognitively, cognitively or even physically, then you're not going to get what you want out of it. You're going to get exposed. You're going to get buried by the idea that this is too much, there's too much pressure, there's too much stress, and that one small fleeting moment where you might get an opportunity to display who you are and what you're capable of, you'll crash and burn. That you just got your driver's license and you went to the NASCAR Daytona 500 and you got asked to race. That's what happened. 
you might have got your CSES, you might have finished up your undergrad, you might be training for a couple of years, and then you get into this situation where you're thrown in this incredibly high threshold environment with Division One athletes and strength coaches that are just ready to tell you you got to pay your dues and put in the work, and you get nothing, 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 nothing. Okay, demonstrate a hand clean. And you're like, ah. That will end your career before it even starts. And that's unfortunate. You just mistimed. But then the other note, let's say that you are going through the process of reading and working out, honing your craft, understanding why you're doing this. You start to get local experiences. Let's say an intern at a high school or there's a, a commercial gym around the corner for me that I can get some experience at working with athletes. Or there's a lower level school or a NAIA or a JUCO school around me that I can start to get reps and I can start to get experience and I can start to understand the nuance of the job. Early morning, late nights, multiple groups, bad coach to athlete ratio, not a lot of resources. Working with athletes that are struggling to understand why they're in there in the first place, that don't really want to do this at a high level every single day and that's your job is to get people to do things that they don't want to do inherently or intuitively. They're not always going to be intrinsically motivated. And you got to see that firsthand. you got to see that at a really high level at other levels. Working with junior high, working with high school, working with maybe some lower level college. Getting experience working with groups that aren't going to be this super motivated group. And you start to get a really good shake of what the job will potentially be. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to know. You just need to know that early and know what you really want from it. And remember, when it gets hard, when it gets really hard and you're pulling your hair out and you're wondering why you're doing this in the first place, you always got the foundation of going back and reading and working out and just processing. Why am I doing this? Turn the music off. See if you are intrinsically motivated. Do it after working five groups and then have empathy for your athletes or to go into class all day, going to practice, don't even know if they want to play sports anymore and having to get a lift two to three times a week. That's the context we're working with. Are we willing to do what we're asking our athletes to do when we're in the same situation? It's all super easy when I can go ahead in my undergrad and I got unlimited time to go and get a workout in. Get my bang energy drink, whatever thing you're doing, have the perfect workout, do my chest and tries, and then you get in there for your college internship and you got to be there for 4.30 in the morning. You got to set up, you got to coach four or five groups, and then you realize that energy drink doesn't have the same level of intensity it once did and then you got to do workouts that are similar with your athletes not just vanity stuff it's hard it's hard to do that like bone aching cns draining type of training doing speed work doing some high level power work with olympic lifts or plyos doing absolute strength or relative strength doing capacity work doing the things that we're asking our athletes to do after all of that if you don't instill in yourself what you're asking your athletes to do and have an appreciation for just how hard that is and no wonder why they're not always super psyched and motivated to work out, regardless of how bad they want to be great, then you're never really going to get the value from the internship. And that's the thing what I was talking about before with AI is probably going to replace a lot of what we do. And here's the truth, and we'll talk about this in education. What we know is going to be less and less valuable because AI can essentially compile that all into a very small distilled down solution for us to follow and do. What it can't do is get in there with people, read their body language, understand their wants or needs, handle the variance which people will have on a daily basis. This is a, this is a learned trait. This is a communication. This is a empathy. This is a development of all the stuff that makes people so invaluable with working with people. That if I'm working with an athlete and I have appreciation for just what they're going through and what they're experiencing and what they really want, I can do that. And it's the same thing we're doing here. You want to be a strength coach. It could be a fleeting moment, like, damn, I'll be sick to wear a t-shirt and shorts every day to work or work with elite level athletes or be on TV on Saturdays with this college football program or oh man, I really admire that strength coach that has 100,000 followers on social media or is living the life that I think I could live. I would love to have that life. Working with high-profile people, doing these high-profile things. 
The truth is, the people that get these things, I know way more than. You might know just as much as right now. The reason why they got those things is because they're just better with working with people. That's the harsh reality. That the, the idea is that if you can be really good at working with people, the world is your oyster. But you're not going to learn that in a book. You're not going to learn that in undergrad. There's invaluable things you're going to learn from that in courses and seminars and reading. Obviously, you talked a lot about that. But what is going to be the transition from just being an enthusiast, someone who likes to work out and read and just passionate about it, to being a legitimate strength coach that can have a high probability of success is getting the reps and working with people, working with athletes, working with coaches, working with other strength coaches, working with support staff between sports medicine, nutrition, psychology, equipment. All these entities are circling around you as you're coming to work every single day. And you've got to be effective at communicating. You've got to be effective at creating some sort of leverage or power dynamic. You've got to be effective in so many ways. And it takes this amazing bandwidth to develop these skills. And there'll be books and resources we'll dive into and we'll talk about. But the truth is, the best way to get out there and become a really good strength coach is understanding that you need the experience working with people, but you also need the reps. You need to put in the time. Now, as we're going through this process and you have that appreciation for volunteering and interning, and that this is experiential learning at its most, why not tie that in to getting experience that actually is going to give you the direct and most linear vector to becoming a really good strength coach and maybe making a little bit of money or maybe living in a place that you ultimately want to live or maybe working with the people that you want to kind of work with. I want to work with swimming and diving. I want to work with soccer. I want to work in this part of the country. I want to work at this level. Remember, these are all what? And you have control over that. And you have control over that because you can choose where you volunteer. It is going to be rare that every level except for professional and power five is not going to take your services volunteering. I'm just saying it. If you want to apply to an Ivy League school, if you want to apply to a non-power five, if you want to apply to a JUCO or an NAIA or a high school or work at a commercial gym that focuses on developing athletes, they will definitely take you. And it will take you right now. And what you have to evaluate, is this the best one thing for me right now from where I'm at with either zero experience or zero knowledge or working with other people, is this going to help me get the job that I want eventually? And is it going to work on discernible skills that I don't have? These are things that you should evaluate. And then when you get into that internship, understand that this is an interview, that this is your, this is your resume. You're blasting it out there. You have the opportunity, one, to develop skills and develop a ability to work with people. But on the other end, you are going to either get a network in the form of references or direct job placement. You are going to build out your resume from what you did with who you did it. And if you can't say that from that experience or you don't pull as much from that experience as you think possible, then you're really going to struggle. And it should come down to asking some questions. Am I getting an opportunity to coach? Am I going to get an opportunity to work with athletes? Am I getting an opportunity to have input on the program? Am I going to have an opportunity to do things that are going to make me better? And if not, can I at least ask the questions? Can I at least get your time? I'm volunteering my time, and I'm doing all the busy work around this place to make this thing operate. Can I at least get your time? Do you have any formal training process for me to get the most from this experience? Yes or no? And if it's not there... Move on. Go to another internship. Talk to other strength coaches that have gone and interned from them. People that you might, might give you the real truth. You're going to be setting up, breaking down, and cleaning a whole lot. That's it. Or, man, this is the most dialed-in internship experience you can possibly get. You're going to get more knowledge and insight on how to train. You're going to get more opportunity to coach. You're going to get more of a network than you could possibly dream of. You just fast-tracked your job process. That you don't have to do five internships like I did. That you don't have to sacrifice thousands of hours moving across the country and hopefully you just get lucky and maybe getting situations where you're living close to home. That you can get this opportunity. If we can get there in a fraction of the time, why shouldn't we at least investigate that? And it comes from just inventorying where you're at. And if you're ready for that Power Five or that professional sports performance internship, 
and you could go in there and crush it. That was the one benefit of doing five internships. There was no moment that was too big for me. There was no situation that I wasn't prepared for. So when it did come up, I was ready. And I was fortunate because I got a job opportunity eventually from every single place I interned at. That every place I volunteered at, based off of the job that I did, I got a job opportunity either directly at the end of that internship or down the road. All of those coaches that I volunteered and interned for came around at least a year or two years later and offered me a job. And I think, if I'm a betting man, it's probably because I was prepared for it. Now, I have some confidence, and I feel like I can do a good job in any situation. And I feel like I'm capable in a lot of ways that I wasn't yet understanding of when I started these internships. But the other end, maybe I just did a really good job of layering in these opportunities. And I wouldn't say I had this grand master plan of starting off in an Ivy League school, which has 40-something sports and only three strength coaches, and you have the opportunity to coach sports on your own. Or going into Georgia Tech after that, where you're just constantly working and getting crushed and buried and just critiqued and criticized and getting into that situation, not being, having thicker skin and being able to take feedback and take direction and rising to the occasion, not getting lost in a sea of five to six other interns. These are the dynamics, as I look back, were really beneficial. And then the final aspect, what we really should talk about is the stamina you need to go through an internship. I've done enough strength and conditioning internships with young first up, first step coaches or their second or third. The one thing that you know is more experience with interning probably means they're gonna have a lot more stamina to handle the entire, entire length of that internship. Right, we always see the interns come out bright eyed and bushy tailed, getting after it the first week yelling, screaming, just trying to bring the energy and the heat. And then week two, week three, week four, if it's summer internship, the moment that it just breaks and snaps people is July 4th break. We usually give them three to seven days off during that period. And the interns come back and they're just nothing. They're just empty. Miss home, a little homesick, tired, frustrated, trying to rationalize why they're still doing this, what they can get from this. If they can just stop today, would they still be able to get the reference or the opportunities that they wanted at the beginning of this? They're processing whether they really wanted to be a strength coach. The enthusiasm, the setting up and breaking down and all the stuff that's just associated with being a college strength coach or a team setting strength coach seems to drastically decline. And that's where the, the good ones come. And the ones that have the best opportunities are the ones who realize that towards the end of that experience. So if we're going to look at the ones that finish really strong, who do you think is going to have a better opportunity? That person that had the stamina to finish or that person that just just bottomed out, right? If I'm going to evaluate the winners and losers of a race and the person who wins the race has this great kick at the end and this person that loses the race came out hot and burnt out, tortoise and hare, whatever you want to classify it as. But that last impression is probably equally as important as that first impression, maybe even more. First impressions matter quite a bit, but you overcome that by great work ethic, great attention to detail, great discipline. I could be five foot eight and no athletic ability and just finish really strong and just be that much better than everyone else when I'm jockeying for a certain job. And having that bandwidth to understand what is sustainable like, do I need to do extensive amount of caffeine to make it through a eight to 12 week internship? Or I'm just gonna do my job every single day. I'm gonna be on time. I'm gonna control the controllables. Every task I'm asked to do, I'm gonna do with discipline and attention to detail. I'm gonna make sure that I give my best effort to facilitating that experience for everyone around me by knowing my job, DYJ, do your job. But I'm gonna do that every single time. And the best feedback you can get if you're doing a good or bad job, even if it's absent, is you get more responsibility. Ultimately, that's the bottom line when it comes down to feedback. I don't need to give you an attaboy every single time you do something. I don't need to tell you you're doing a great job. I hope you're happy here. What you need to do is evaluate what is a positive feedback coming from, I keep getting more on my plate. That means I'm becoming more and more invaluable. And that's the secret. Are you indispensable at the end of your internship that now we simply can't function or operate without you? 
that we absolutely need to hire you because quite frankly, you have brought a ton of value here, that you are more valuable than the paid people. And if that's the case, me as a director, I need to see that and either motivate the paid people or get rid of the paid people and get new paid people. It's a job. It's performance. My livelihood is contingent upon everyone performing at a high level. And if you're not, pro not producing, if you're not working, if you're not bringing any value, we'll talk about this with actually building your career, that the most money shouldn't be within the first paycheck you ever get. You should as a gradual transition, improve daily. And that's where working out and reading comes because you're practicing and you're learning every single day that your value should go up incrementally with that and you should be compensated to meet that. And hopefully we can look at this as a different model of compensation. But that's the game here, making sure that we understand our internship. So let's just do a little quick recap. One, evaluating why you want to be a strength coach, right? That's pretty intuitive. But let's make sure that we have that down. Start to look at what do I want to be? Where do I want to work? Who do I want to work with? Start to find internships that are going to best facilitate that. They're going to give you the best opportunity to learn, develop skills, develop a network, give you a realistic and tangible opportunity to become a paid strength conditioning coach. And then bust your ass. Do, your, do a great job. Do a great job from the entirety, start to finish of being an intern. And once you get those things really down packed, your internships will be that much more invaluable and your opportunities will go up. It's not luck why someone got a job. It's not luck why someone, because I'm not hiring someone because I like them. I hire people because I know I need them because I can't do it without them or they do such a great job when they're here. They make me and everyone else around them better. Why can't you be that? It's a skill. Remember, it's not what you know. AI is going to do that for us. It's what you do and how you do it and who you do it for. If you can get people better because you are incredibly motivating or you're incredibly disciplined or incredibly structured and know what your purpose is and know why you're doing it and never have a bad day, you never have an off day, you are invaluable, not only today, but for the future. You're actually going to increase in value. And you don't build that without going and doing some experiential learning. It's not something people are born with. You have to work at it. You have to get through the first couple internships or hopefully one and learn that this about who I am start to finish that changes the trajectory of your career. That you're not hoping and wishing that you are now strategically aligning. And then here's the fun part. And I love this conversation. is when you have so many opportunities that you're really struggling to figure out what you want to do as opposed to not having a damn thing. And I'll be honest, I have those conversations quite a bit. And I tell those coaches all the time, pause, reflect on what you had to do to get to this point and start to ask yourself, holy crap, am I accomplishing what I set out to accomplish based off the first conversation we had when I interned for you? To me, that's the fun part. So let's stop right there. Take a second, go through these tasks. Go through the suggested reading what we have or the suggested modules with the PH curriculum because I think that's going to help accentuate this process. And then let's go on to the next module.